Hello, everybody, and welcome to our November Ranked Choice Voting Roadmap. This is a really exciting one. We're going to be talking all about our lobby day coming up next year, January 2024. It seems far away, but it's filming up pretty quickly. My name is Ben Chapman. Uh, I'm the communications manager at Fairvote Washington. That means I'm in charge of sending out emails to folks, inviting them to events like this, posting on social media. We're at uh, at Fairvote WA on basically every social media platform. So follow us everywhere you can find us. Uh, and I am going to be emceeing this event tonight, which actually just means I'll be talking right here at the start and I'll be passing it on to Lisa and Carrie to introduce our guests and stars of the show. A few housekeeping things. Our agenda for tonight, we'll start with introducing a new staff member, Nicole Calora, who is our new operations manager. You'll get to meet her. Uh, you'll hear about the Washington Voices Act and why that's so important, what it is. We'll get a little bit more um, in the weeds on how we're going to advocate for it later on because we have Tacoma City Council member Ogi Diaz and Washington Conservation Voters. Oh, uh, Tony, you have a long title. Um, Civic Engagement Manager, I think. Uh, but it's a longer title than that. So I, I will get you, you'll get a correct title for Tony later. And then we'll have some Q&A. So as a reminder, the Q&A portion is, uh, you, you can participate in the Q&A just by going to the bottom of your screen and there should be a Q ampersand A. You can click on that and send in your questions and get some answers. There's another way to participate tonight and you can join in the watch party on Slack. We have a organization-wide Slack channel that you can join as a volunteer. It's a great way to access us if you have any questions for Fairville Washington staff, if you want to connect with other volunteers. You can also talk about this webinar that's happening right now if you go join our watch party. So uh, go ahead and if you want to join that, click on the link in the chat and you can join our Slack channel and make sure you join hashtag watch party and be part of the conversation. With no further ado, I'm going to pass it on to Lisa Aro, our executive director, so she can introduce our new operations manager. Thank Take you, Ben. Away. Thanks, Ben. And hello, everyone. Thank you for making time tonight to be here uh, to get help us get ready for the exciting lobby day coming up in January. Uh, before we dive into all that, I did want to take a moment to introduce our newest staff member, uh, I've been around long enough to recognize that many of you who are here tonight, um, and I know that you know that there is an awful lot that goes on behind the scenes to make sure that all the things that are happening here at Fairboat Washington can happen, introducing bills, winning campaigns in Seattle, all kinds of exciting moments we've had. Um, and we are super thrilled to be able to have more help now with the back end as we do more and more. Uh, Nicole Kalora is joining us uh, just this month as our operations manager. Hey, Nicole. Hi, Lisa. So, so excited to have you here. And I just wanted folks to have a chance to meet you quickly tonight. I know that you have a more back-end um, uh, role at the org, but this is your moment to be in the spotlight. <laughs> and can you just take a moment to tell us briefly, what on earth does an operations manager do at a place? Yeah. Fair vote Washington. Yeah, happy to talk about that. So basically, I feel like an operations manager, it is a more internal role, not as forward facing. But my job is to make sure that all of the internal processes are taken care of so that all of the staff can do their best work. So taking care of database stuff, um, working with vendors, helping with event management, uh, working with our board, um, and, and basic HR tasks. So basically taking the things off of the staff's plate so they can do their best work and I take care of all the behind the scenes things so the magic can happen with everybody else. We're already feeling the burden lifted um, as you've been a, a real lending a lot of help already. And I know that as we get to lobby days, which, which is gonna be a big deal, that um, your help is gonna be um, super important. One more quick question before we turn to the <clears throat> lobby day uh, topic of the evening. Um, I know, Nicole, you actually did some volunteering for Fair Vote Washington, texting in our Clark County campaign last year. You've done a lot of volunteering for uh, things like getting voters to send in their ballots. How do you see ranked choice voting as a continuation of that work? Yeah, well, it's so important for everyone to use, have 
their civic responsibility of voting, right? So if we get people there, but then also I think because if we can bring ranked choice voting to all of our voters here in Washington state and beyond, then they have more of a say in their democracy and seeing that action taking place. So I think it's really exciting to help educate everyone on what ranked choice voting is and how we can make our democracy better by bringing it to the state of Washington. Great. Well, thank you so much. It's good to have you on the team, Nicole. Thank you. Glad to be here. Great. Okay. So I get to kick off here uh, with a, a couple of uh, quick uh, highlights about the bill that we're going to be uh, talking about at Lobby Day. So we've got a Lobby Day. It's coming January. You're here to learn more about how that's going to work. We're going to hear from Olga Diaz and, and Tony Ivey, their experience with Lobby Day. But I get just a minute here to tell you a little bit about the latest uh, that's going on with the bill that we will be advocating for when we're uh, in Olympia on January 17th. Um, this is a bill that uh, is just about to be filed next week. Uh, so it does not yet have a bill number, but you will you all are, are on our uh, email list. You'll be hearing just as soon as we have that uh, specific bill number, but we're calling it, uh, we have a new name. It is the old familiar ranked uh, the local options bill. So if you're just tuning in, uh, we've been working for several years now to get a local options bill passed for ranked choice voting here in Washington that is local and optional. And it would allow uh, cities and towns and school boards all around the state to be able to start using ranked choice voting uh, if they want to, if they wish. So you'd think that this would be a sensible common sense bill that would pass quickly and easily, but it takes a while to get legislation through Olympia. So here we are uh, coming back with a refreshed, updated version of the local options bill. It's also got a new name. And the reason for the refresh and the new name is that something pretty significant happened last June. In the middle of June of last year, a, the Washington State Supreme Court, uh, in a case in Franklin County, Franklin v. Portugal, reached a decision in a Washington Voting Rights Act case. Now, the case did not itself uh, center ranked choice voting, but in the decision on page 11, if you care to look it up, the justices fell out specify that ranked choice voting is an available remedy under the Washington Voting Rights Act for communities that are looking to uh, ensure that they are in compliance with the Washington Voting Rights Act, which requires that communities have voting methods that allow uh, protected uh, groups to elect uh, uh, representatives of their choice. And uh, it, it, it may not be surprising to hear that there are uh, many communities in Washington state that have reason to be concerned that they may not be in compliance with the Washington Voting Rights Act. So what the state Supreme Court did in June was to open the door just a whole lot wider for localities to adopt ranked choice voting proactively without waiting for the legislature to pass a local options bill. So. That has changed the way that we uh, engage with legislators. It has become important for the legislature to do a little bit of housekeeping now to ensure that when ranked choice voting begins to be implemented around the state, that there is some consistency, some standards, some reasonable compliance with expectations that will make this an, a successful experience for voters and candidates alike. So. Uh, the Washington, so the, so the bill, the local options bill that you all have known and loved, many of you for quite a few years now, it retains all of those elements. It allows local jurisdictions to adopt ranked choice voting if they wish, without having to go through the, the, the more burdensome approach of, of invoking the Washington Voting Rights Act. Now, the local options bill will open that door. Um, and it will um, also set these statewide standards. So uh, uh, those are that's why the new bill uh, will have a new name, and it's called the Washington Voices Act. That's an acronym, Voices. And let's see if we can get all those words. So it's about voting options, uh, implementation, compliance, education, 
and standards. The Washington Voices Act. Representative Mia Gregerson will be prime sponsoring it in the House. We will know the lineup of co-sponsors next week. We expect the bill to be pre-filed next week and to have a bill number shortly after that. And we do expect there to be a Senate version uh, coming soon. We'll let you know just as soon as we know the Senate prime sponsor. Ben, how did I do? Does that give a summary of what we need to know? That's the bill we'll be talking about during lobby days this year. Oh, and maybe I will mention one more thing. For those of you who have been around a while, you know that last year we worked on a different bill in the legislature. That was the presidential primaries bill. That bill is still there. We still love it. It's just that it encountered some uh, roadblocks at the national political level out of our hands. The Democratic National Committee is gonna need to take some steps to add their support before our state legislators are gonna be ready to pass that bill. So we're moving our focus and attention this year to the Washington Voices Act. That's it. Thanks, Lisa, that was fantastic. And if folks folks have questions about the this bill or why we're prioritizing this bill or why it has a new name, put your questions in the Q&A because we will cover those at the end and we can bring Lisa back for the Q&A um, when we reach it. Now I'm gonna pass it over to Carrie to introduce our next guests. Let me bring Carrie up here. Hi, Carrie. How's it going? Hi, Ben. It is great. It is so fun to be here with you tonight and all of our attendees and our special guests. I am thrilled to bring them on. Um, first, we are going to introduce Tacoma Council Member uh, Olgi Diaz. Olgi was born and raised in Pierce County, and her political aspirations were shaped by her parents who immigrated from Guatemala and succeeded in achieving the American dream through their military service and union jobs. Throughout her career, Olgi has worked to foster a more reflective democracy and expand access to power through work with local nonprofits like One America, Planned Parenthood, and the Washington State Legislature, as well as candidate campaigns across Pierce County. As a longtime government affairs and political campaign professional, Olgi spends most of her spare time building up future civic leaders through key leadership roles and pursuing tribal sovereignty and wildlife conservation. And we'll also add, she's a dog mom to two beautiful pups. Welcome, Olgi. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Next, we have Tony Ivey, who is the political and civic civil engagement manager for the Washington Conservation Voters, um, which I believe is Washington Conservation Action now. Um, after graduating with a BA in political science from Howard University, Tony moved to Tacoma, Washington to further develop his skills in political action and advocacy. Since then, he has worked as a field organizer, a legislative assistant in the House Legislature, and he is most proud of working to elect environmental candidates in Pierce County and organizing to help pass Tacoma's climate emergency resolution in 2019. Tony is never one to shy away from a conversation on political news, the best local parks or DC comics. Thank you so much for being here, Tony. So you all are here tonight to help me inform our members what a lobby day is like. We've gotten some really good questions from our volunteers and our membership um, who just have maybe never been to a lobby day, maybe have never heard the word before, but you two are extremely experienced people. Um, Olgi has, both Olgi and Tony have hosted many lobby days. Um, Olgi has the unique perspective now of being the recipient of lobbyists. So I'm really excited to bring her perspective on and Tony um, being an organizer and all the hats he wears is also one of our coalition members and um, supporting this lobby day. So we're gonna get to hear perspectives from people who have been to lobby days, organize them, and are helping organize our upcoming lobby day on January 17th, 2024. Please sign up. Um, so first, I'm gonna have a question for both of you. Um, why do lobby days matter? Um, I'll hand it to you first, Olgi. Sure. Um, I think the biggest reason lobby days matter is because it's one of the best ways to both get involved and meet your elected officials. It's an, oh, sort of a low barrier way um, to 
uh, get a chance to have a face-to-face -face or a Zoom to Zoom with them and meet them. Most people who sign up for a lobby day, uh, especially the first time, don't even necessarily know who their elected official is or um, what uh, the different levels of government um, have jurisdiction over. So it's also a fun way to learn a lot more about government, sort of live action civic education day as an adult. Um, and uh, it's one of the most important ways that you can um, tell elected officials what you want and what you expect out of their leadership and what your um, aspirations are for their policy making. Um, I think most elected officials, uh, I would say 99% of them really, really, really are dying to hear from people, even when they're people who don't, they don't agree with, especially it's the job they've signed up to sort of say, please tell me what's going on. And lobby days are a great way for people to be able to sort of fulfill that other side where they're sort of always just putting out press releases and saying, please come talk to me. So it's the moment where you get to come talk to them. Amazing. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I have heard that is a lot as well from legislators. We just want to hear from our people. So it is an awesome opportunity to come talk to them. Um, and now I'm thinking of this as political camp. So <laughs> come join. All right, Tony, why to you are lobby days important? Yeah. Um, well, thanks for, first of all, thanks for having me, Fair Vote, and thanks for having me, Carrie. And uh, lobby days are really important and they're really exciting because they are also the most visible way to get attention for your issue not only from the general public or the media perhaps, but really for the decision makers, uh, for the elected officials as well. Um, every year, particularly in Olympia, they're inundated with hundreds of bills from corporations, large groups, um, you know, powerful connected people. And that sometimes drowns out the voice of the constituents. It drowns out the voice of grassroots people like you and me. And this is a great opportunity to show our collective power. Um, for people who don't have a big lobbyist to come and talk to them and take them out to dinner, this is our opportunity to show to show up and to sort of show out, show out why we think these issues are important. Uh, and I also kind of see it as um, lobby days provide a perfect way to sort of complete the cycle of resp civic responsibility. Uh, we always say vote, which is very important. Uh, and that's when usually elected officials are asking something for us. They want our vote, but now we get to ask something of them. We now want something from them. We want them to be responsive to these issues on justice, on voting, on democracy that are really important to our communities and getting what we want. Uh, and like uh, Councilwoman Diaz says, it's it's really great to go to Olympia and they feel connected. Uh, it gets you connected to Olympia and the legislature. It becomes not just this tangible place or thing. Um, it becomes very empowering, meeting with your legislator, being there, and it really gets you excited to be a part of the process. Thank you so much. I love all of that. And I really want to highlight the visible power aspect. It's not even, it's not just visible power for our legislators, but it's visible power for each other. This is a time where we get to see our community in this space. And it really is an empowering time to stand on the steps together to go to the meetings and say, I am not here alone. I don't, it's not just me who cares about this. I am with a large group of people who also is deeply engaged in our civic policy. Um, before I head to our next question, I just want to shout out that our fabulous organizer, Steph, has created sort of an agenda of this evening with all of the relevant links. She's put it in the chat a couple of times um, and just would love to point you there if you would like to follow along. Um, next, Tony, I just mentioned Capital Steps all the things. Um, can you walk us through a little bit of what a lobby day could look like? Yeah, absolutely. And every lobby day is uh, a bit different, but they all basically follow a pretty, pretty standard uh, template, I would say. Um, first is getting down there. A lobby days are very effective because they are in the seats of power, in the halls of power down in Olympia. So once we travel to Olympia, uh, we normally meet at a central location, a nearby uh, uh, house of worship, church or community center. Um, we congregate, we talk, we get breakfast, which is always great. Uh, and then we really sort of dive in on uh, the policy. Uh, we talk about it generally as far as what we're after, and then really nail in on those talking points that we want to make sure the legislators hear. Uh, they want to hear who we are, what neighborhood we're from, why this issue is important, and then the hard ask, the ask of, you know, what, uh, 
are you going to support this bill? Yes or no. Um, but it's also a lot of a, a lot of great civic, uh, like Councilwoman Diaz has civic training and engagement. We need to learn more about uh, uh, about Olympia as a whole. L learn more about the process. Learn more about these bills and other democracy related issues. And it's a really great day for a lot of excitement, uh, activists, people, and a great way to meet community members as you're generally going to be placed with people in your same legislative district. So some people you'll know, some people you won't know, but it's a great place to also sort of build power with. These are your neighbors. These are the people who are not only your neighbors and your friends, but people who are passionate about the exact same issues as you are. Um, so it, it's a lot of great planning and learning how to organize, particularly because those 15 minutes or so you get with a uh, legislator, which is pretty typical, go by very fast. Uh, so it's always really interesting uh, to sort of get that sort of um, help and tea up from people next to you. If you've never done a constituent or a meeting with an elected official or spoken in front of city council, it can be kind of intimidating. And this provides a very safe, very clean, very uh, informed way to do it. Right. Uh, Fairbrook Washington has provided so much documentation. They provide such great talking points. They provide so much help that it really makes talking to your elected officials really easy and uh, just that powerful. Amazing. Thank you. And as I'm thinking through the day, like you, I am hearing all the things that we are going to meet. We're going to have breakfast. We'll connect with each other. Um, everyone gets their schedules of when they're meeting with their legislators and throughout the day we'll be going around and everybody's meetings will look a little bit different or depending on which LD you're in. Um, but a really fun part of the day too is a rally on the Capitol steps. Tony, can you talk us through what a rally is, what it looks like and why it's so much fun? Yeah, so the rally is my favorite part. I mean, I love meeting with my legislators. Uh, the rally is my favorite part. Um, it's a really positive gathering of all of our supporters, attendees, often with signs. And it's a very popular staple of lobby days because it provides that really powerful visible, visible representation of who we are, what we're standing for, and how passionate we are about this. They're fun, engaging events, normally with a couple speakers to get us excited and maybe some chants. And it's kind of an invocation for lobby day. It's a great way to uh, uh, state what our values are, why we are here, and why we care so much. Oftentimes, you'll see uh, legislators sort of peek out or come behind the columns to see what we're doing uh, because they are aware that we're there. Uh, we make a good amount of uh, a good amount of good noise, a good amount of uh, good uh, uh, demands, and it's a really effective way to just energize us for the day ahead. And it's a really good opportunity to let them know that we're coming, that we're united, and that we are powerful. Thank you so much. Rallies really are so fun. I got to go to one in 2020 pre-COVID and we all stood up there with our signs. We had chants. We heard from leaders in the team. Um, it was a really special time. So it's something I'm looking forward to, to the, that day. And if you're not convinced already, sign up. All right. My next question is for both of our um, panelists. Um, Olgi, what is the best way to make sure that your community comes with you on Lobby Day? We've heard a lot that this is something we're doing together, that this is a com community building. Um, and we know relational organizing is one of the best ways to bring people in. So how do you bring people with you? Um, it's going to sound silly, um, but I like to think of it, especially when I was an organizer um, running different Lobby Days, is I would always ask, folks who had signed up to literally bring their friend, um, whether or not their friend was interested in the topic or not, because if they're not, they're going to learn about it. And by the end of the day, they're going to be one of us um, because of the rally, because of the engagement, because of how much they learn. Um, and if they are your friend, odds are they probably share a similar value. Um, and so they might get to meet more friends. Um, and I think it's just, it's honestly, it's not that different from voting. Um, if I'm voting, I'm going to call my friends and make sure they're also voting. Um, you don't want to miss out on the party, the fun, the opportunity to maybe talk to folks about other priorities as well. Um, sometimes folks will come down and get to have other meetings um, with other folks um, who have similar interests or you get to learn about how laws are made. You might get to see a committee hearing that has nothing to do with what you're there to lobby that day. You just have a 
a down moment and you can learn something new about a, a bill you knew nothing about. So it's just a really fun way to spend a day with a friend that maybe you um have been meaning to grab coffee with perpetually and so just come to lobby day with me we'll spend all day together we'll get to go to a rally they'll give us breakfast it'll be a good time um uh, and i think that that is that is the way is like you 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 bring community by bringing them literally pick them up i have more than one friend who um if i'm doing something be it a lobby day be it a training be it whatever it is we're doing i just sort of text them and say hey i'll be at your house at eight we're going we're rolling isn't that an option be ready so i love um, it <laughs> get you a lobby day partner and then you're not alone either and it helps with that it's true and you know i'm thinking of asking the friend you haven't seen in forever for you know that you want to get coffee with and you're not just getting, you know, one or two hours of coffee, you're getting a whole day, which means you're off the hook for seeing that friend for the next six months. So it's really, it's good for everybody involved. Tony, how do you bring community with you to Lobby Day? Yeah, uh, I second a lot what Council Member, Council Member Dia said. Um, first of all, just making it easy. Carpool, hey, get in the car. Um, I've been quote unquote tricked in or brought a lot of places just by that. Like, hey, are you driving? Terrific. Um, and then... Uh, you know, when you talk to your friends and you talk to people about even the coming election, it's, there's a lot to get sort of demoralized about. And I can, I always really agree with that. And my next, whenever I say people are demoralized about voting or the system is, okay, so what are we doing about it? And ranked choice voting particularly provides such great solutions and answers for not only Washington, but the entire country on what we could do to make our voting system better. Um, so my favorite thing to do is complain. My second favorite thing to do is to fix what I'm complaining about. Um, so I feel like that really helps. Um, and the fact that a lot of people oftentimes do want to make change. They do want to help. But a lot of the ways we normally ask is pretty scary, intimidating. Do you want to knock on doors and talk to people about politics? That's scary. Do you want to go to City Hall and talk to people for the dais? That's scary as well. Hey, come to me to this uh, fun rally where we just basically learn. You say your name and just be part of the group. That is a great way to show power. And that is a great way to get people engaged in it for the first time. So this is a, I, lobby days are, you know, a double-edged sword of being perfect. They are amazingly powerful, super visible, but they are actually, for people who are new, a pretty low ask. Um, as long as you're there, you are going to be learning, you're going to be activated, uh, and you're going to be uh, able to make a big difference, even if your skills are not, you know, professional or anything close to it. Um, so making it easy, grab someone, especially if they, so, so many things to be upset about, like, great, we're going to make it better. You know, come and loser, we're going to fix democracy, that type of energy. Let's go. Absolutely. Wednesdays we wear pink, other Wednesdays we go to the Capitol. It's perfect. <laughs> I definitely really want to underscore that no matter your skill level, no matter your experience level, you showing up at all on lobby day is extremely important and extremely impactful so come one come all um that said we've gotten a couple of questions from people wondering what is the value of having a meeting with a legislator who really supports ranked choice voting and olgi i'd love to hear from you from your perspective as a legislator why it's so helpful to hear from people who agree with you yeah, um, I will say I think it can be one of the most, um, A, it's an easy meeting when you're showing up, um, sort of just saying, hello, I'm here with Fair, um, Fair Vote Washington to talk to you about ranked choice voting. I know you're a super fan. I'm just here to sort of give you a hug and say thank you for that. Um, it's a really easy meeting to show up somewhere and say thank you, as opposed to showing up somewhere and say, I need $3 billion, please. Or I need this bill passed and no one will pass it and these people hate it and here's why I love it, right? Like that's a harder, that's more nuance. When we're truly just showing up. Here's why it's great. Thank you for agreeing with me. That's on my end as someone who's shown up for lobby day, it's easy. As an elected official, um, I will say it's not dissimilar from sort of working the complaint desk at um, any place where there's a complaint desk. I only hear complaints. Um, it's really, really rare as an elected official to hear from someone who is saying thank you, from someone who is happy, from someone who has not been wronged. Um, so if you are the one showing up and spreading that, I think it also leaves um, a little morale boost for the elected official who you're seeing, which is helpful if they're supporting your cause. Um, but more than anything else, it can start to feel like every everything you're doing 
has little meaning if you never hear that it is a good thing. And so I think it's really galvanizing for elected officials to hear that they're doing something right because they hear probably 80 to 90% of the time that they're doing things wrong. Um, and so I think that can really help. It also helps um, many legislators will keep tallies of how many people have contacted them for or against different issues. And um, it can help with different folks who are maybe on the fence on the issue. If we hear a lot from folks who are really supportive of it, um, that can that can help spread that word, create that buzz and make sure that people know that this is an issue that really matters to people across the board. Um, and I think that, that that really helps even if the person's already on board, they can tell their friends like, oh, well, I had 50 people show up. This is how important it is to me. This is why it's important. Even if you didn't have as many show up or even if we're hearing from the other side, it's only two loud people saying no, it's 80 people saying yes. I think it really helps. Absolutely, thank you. And it, it kind of reminds me the way that you can, it sounds, what I'm hearing a little bit is maybe you can even help push a supporter to being a champion. Yes. where they're not just going to vote yes, but they're going to get somebody else to vote yes with them, yep. which is what we're going to need when it comes to the House floor. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the House floor. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Olgi. Um, you kind of brought it up a little bit. You hear a lot from people who don't like what you're doing or legislators hear a lot of that. Um, what is the value of meeting with a legislator who doesn't support ranked choice voting or doesn't support your issue? Um, the biggest thing is exactly the flip side of what you mentioned is taking someone who loves your issue, making them a champion, right? That's somebody who might sponsor your bills in the future. The flip side is also true. Um, if someone, you know, or you're, is rumored to like, oh, that person didn't vote for it last year, or they seem to not like it, or they seem to always be meddling in it. Um, one of the best ways that you can help is by having a conversation with someone um, and actually moving them from someone who's antagonistic to someone who is neutral or to someone who is just like low key, just like, oh, I'm not really into it, but I'm not going to do anything to try to harm your bill. I'm not going to do anything to try to ruin your cause. Like getting it off of their radar is some sort of big boogeyman really helps. Um, I think that's one of the things that I have seen um, folks do is showing up and being knowledgeable. Um, on the issue can help debunk some myths. Sometimes we don't know or we've assumed why someone hates something. Um, I will own um, as a Tacoma Pierce County person, some of the worst people that y'all will probably have to meet with are the Pierce County people who have been around when we had um, ranked choice voting on our ballot in, in 2008. I voted in that election. It was an interesting, I've gotten to vote for ranked choice voting um, in ranked choice voting. Um, some of those folks who are still around are some of the most naysayers. Um, and so I think it's really helpful to go and have that direct conversation with them and say, what what didn't you like or what didn't work? Here's how this is different. Here's how this is improved. Here's how it's better. It's been 15 years or something. Like, I feel like we think about other things we did 15 years ago. We didn't have smartphones. Like things are different. Um, we could try something again, probably. Um, so, and just having a neighbor or constituent show up and have that conversation, especially often you're probably going to meet with someone who you might usually agree with, but this is the issue they don't agree with you on. It helps to have that sort of lower barrier conversation and help move them from that antagonistic place to a, a more neutral spot. Or even make a champion out of them. You never know. It's kind of it is kind of like doorbelling in that way. You might you might turn someone right around, um, and you might be the person who gets to do that. So I think those are sometimes the more fun ones. So I'm hearing yes, absolutely come to lobby day, and yes, absolutely talk to everyone. That's what I heard. <laughs> I mean, I heard a lot more. Thank you so much, council member. Um, one more question for you: What do you, as a legislator, wish people knew about their elected officials? before they showed up with you? Sure, I alluded to it there, um, but the answer is, especially for those of you on this call, um, if you've bothered to come out on a Wednesday night at 6.30 to hear about ranked choice voting and hear about how to lobby, um, odds are you care a lot about this issue, you care a lot about this cause, and you probably know more about it than I would say the majority of the legislators, other than probably Mia Gregerson or other folks who sponsored the bill. Um, and so knowing that you are sort of the grassroots expert on it um, is, is really empowering. Showing up in that room and they have hundreds of bills, many committees, all these different subjects, all these different issues. You're probably going to know a lot more about this bill, how it works, how it's different than the last year's bill, because you've got the fact sheets, you've got, you've got the presentations all day to learn about it. 
Um, and you can be the conduit for the org. If there's anything that you don't know, you have direct access to the people who wrote it or the people who know it. And you can help give them that resource um, because elected officials don't, they can't know everything, especially in the way that we've set this up where folks are working um, in this job part-time. Um, some of them are teachers, some of them are nurses. They do other things during the day, during outside of session time. And Voting systems may not be their expertise, but it is yours as an advocate and as an enthusiast. And I think you get to do that. You get to be a teacher for a day. You get to do the educating. And I think that that is one of the biggest things that do not be intimidated by them. They're people just like you. And you probably know more about your issue that more likely than not, you know more about the issue than they do. And you can give them free information. And a lot of them are nerds. They're there to learn. So they're excited to hear it. That is amazing. I love that so much. That is a reminder I needed too that we, I think sometimes coming in can feel a little bit intimidated by power, but it's so true. Legislators are humans. They're not infallible. They're not omnipotent, omnipotent about all the issues. So we do, we do bring a lot of power that way. Um, Council member, I lied. I have one more question for you. <laughs> what questions do you, what questions do you love getting when you have meetings with constituents? That's a great question. Um, I feel like I really like it when people ask um, ask questions about why things don't work or why someone is opposing something, right? So um, kind of similar to the like, why meet with somebody who doesn't like ring choice voting? Um, I really like it when someone sort of isn't confrontational necessarily, but just sort of if I say, oh, we can't do that because it's not in our comp plan or something just super wonky and zoning at a city level, um and having them just sort of do almost the toddler of why but like why does it work that way um you can start to pull out if there's a barrier there or if it's just we've just done it this way forever no one wants to change and I think that really helps us get to the meat of whatever their topic is or whatever your issue is um is it something that's actually changeable or is it just that people are too lazy to change it or um, is it not changeable? Or is the way to change it not necessarily through a bill or through an ordinance, but maybe the way to change it is by going to the voters or maybe the way to change it is by um, doing something at a different level of government. So a lot of things we go to Olympia to talk to them about um, are very different than what folks come to talk to me about at the city level. But I am often sort of pointing up at the state going, we could do that if we had more money. Um, and so uh, all the levels of government are really connected, but I really love when people try to sort of ask the why question. Um, and I like it when people ask about um, just sort of why we're involved, what our, um, what we're interested in or what, what our goals are. Oftentimes if I meet with a constituent, they're like, oh, you know, I really want to talk to you about this building that's coming in or this business is coming in or why my street lights aren't working. But if someone comes in to talk about those things and they also take an interest in, well, what are you working on? I think that helps make the it helps build a relationship in the future that like, oh, now I know that they really care about city cleanups, um, but they also now know that I really care about transit. And so if they have a question, we now know what each other's likes are. We can we can have a, a more um, friendship and relationship going forward um, that when I have an issue, I can say, oh, that's that, that nice lady who really cares about ranked choice voting. I'm gonna call her because she's gonna know the answer. Um, and so I think I really just love that, that getting to know people, it's fun. That is so cool. It just reminded me that, you know, we, to Tony's point earlier, you know, at first um, candidates are asking from something from us as voters, and then it's our turn to ask elected officials for something. And, but there's also still a reciprocity of how can, how can we as the voter and how can we as an activist help you, the elected official, achieve your goals? Because sometimes you might have the same goals, but like you're, you're mentioning, there might be policy barriers or there might be a better way to do this and we can work together. So um, thank you so much for that. Tony, I have a question for you. How, what are some of the favorite memories you have from volunteers from different lobby days? Like, do you have like a top two? Oh my God. Um, oof. Favorite. Um, one, which isn't, doesn't really count, was we had uh, the legendary trash bag monster for our environmental lobby day. He showed up. It's a it's a monster made entirely of trash bags. I got a picture with him. He's sort of a local mascot celebrity. Um, that was one. Uh, but probably, uh, 
I would definitely say the the rally on the steps. Um, it was one of our lobby days, uh, and we had oh no, a rally on the steps for a youth lobby day actually. So it wasn't us. Um, we were helping at, and it was raining, and that didn't stop us at all. We still brought out everything. Uh, I think I was holding the umbrella for one of the speakers. They were on a megaphone, and they were loud talking about why climate change mattered to them, why it was important. Uh, and it just got, the rain had almost the opposite effect for everybody. We got even more passionate. We got even more excited. Um, we had tents up for, for the for the speaker and whatnot, so nothing got damaged. But it was just super galvanizing to see all these people, particularly young people, so passionate about uh, this issue that they were here on like a random Wednesday, uh, ready to go like charge that the 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 uh seats of power you know they were excited and they were ready to meet with their legislators and knew what they were going to say and it was just so powerful we had performances we had speakers and it was just amazing um i remember the rain as a, as a side effect but it, w- it just made it so much better it's just it's hard to describe the palpable energy of a lobby day it is it, it will turn anyone into an activist and that's what you normally see after your friend starts to be like okay so what's next what are we doing Where's this bill? <laughs> and it's just, it's just tons of fun. That is so cool. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, we have some kind of gritty questions coming in from our audience that I think I'm going to have Ben ask me, but I want to hear any final words from both of you on why people should come to Lobby Day. Uh, we can start with Council Member Diaz. Sure. I'll, I think I'll pick it up right where Tony left it, which is... Um, Lobby Day is a good um, gateway to doing other um, advocacy or um, just general um, outreach work. Uh, Lobby Day was actually why I am where I am now. When I was in high school, I went to a Lobby Day and it opened my eyes and changed my um, vision that I was like, oh, you can just talk to these people. They're, They're just normal people in my neighborhood who represent me and feel in my case they felt differently than I did about the bill that I was there to talk to you about as as a teenager um and it really galvanized me to get involved in politics and then later on um be a lobbyist and run for office myself um but I think if it doesn't inspire you to do all that which it can please let it do that um it can also just inspire you to maybe it's how you become um your future own career change like oh man that was so cool I really want to be the next Ben and do their communications over it um at Fairmont, Washington. That is so cool that you guys get to put together these lobby days, right? Like, I think it can help spark something inside of you that is bigger than you that um, I think a lot of us are looking for sometimes. Um, And I think that that is just a really fun reason to get involved with any kind of lobby day, but particularly ranked choice voting, we might get to make democracy more reflective and better for people. And I think that that is the number one reason if you care about this bill, you care about this issue, get involved. Thank you so much. All right, Tony. I, I would say that. Oh yeah, but as far as like why you should be there, it's just it's such an amazing way to break down the barriers between you and elected officials and you and politics. You know, people say they're involved in politics or they um people feel very separate from politics outside of filling in a bubble. This is a great way to sort of take down those barriers. They are people just like you. They want to speak to you, particularly because you are constituents, you people they uh, rely on. Uh, from information and it provides a great ongoing dialogue with these elected officials uh, next time you contact them either in person or by an email it's great to say great seeing you at lobby day we had a great conversation that will kick in their mind because they know they can't blow you off <laughs> that kicks in their mind that you are watching it puts it puts it uh in really real terms not only that they're real but you are real to them um and it's just a great way to to, to sort of launch uh it's a great, easy way to launch uh, activism and real passion for changing your community. Thank you both so much. It was a delight to chat with you. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and your experience. Um, I'll send you back to the ethers of Zoom. (laughs) Thank you. All yes, right, thank so. you very much, Tony and Ivy. Uh, Tony, Ivy, and that's member Diaz. Um, I have some questions from the audience for Carrie. Uh, and 
let's ask the first one. These are All pretty right. pretty in-depth, really, about the about the mechanics of Lobby Day. So can you specify what time we will gather in Olympia? And can we participate if we arrive late? Yeah, thank you so much for this question. Um, we expect to be getting the day started pretty early, around 7.30 in the morning. This is because there are some meetings that can be scheduled with legislators as early as 8 a.m. And we want to get everybody there and ready um, together. Um, if you arrive late, yes, absolutely, you can still participate. It's possible, depending on your meeting schedule, that you might not be present for all of your meetings. But if you're there for the rally, that's a huge deal and really important to all of us. So please come. Please share that the, the time that you have. We are delighted for you to come. All right. All right. Thanks, Carrie. And what are some things that somebody should not do on a lobby day? I that's a great question. Um, I would say what we I'm going to start with saying what we should be doing. We should be um, there building community. We should be there um, talking to our legislators. And during that meeting, we really want to stick to the talking points. So I think the thing I'm going to focus on here is that we don't want to bring up a bunch of ideas that aren't going to be consistent with the message we're trying to share with all of our legislators. It's really helpful if the same message is getting across to everyone. We want a, the same story so that our theme, our message, our cause is clear. So it's not very helpful when people come and talk about their deep, 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 you know, niche issue <laughs> um, and really stick to what we're uh, trying to guide throughout this day. We also don't wanna be, you know, destructive to property and things like that, so. That's a good tip. That's a very good tip. And so we have a question from somebody in the 26th legislative district. How can I find out if my district's representatives support ranked choice voting? That is a great question. And it's not always obvious. So thank you for bringing this up. Um, one way you can check is really just by contacting their office and finding out if they're supportive. Um, if they are, say, a prime sponsor on the bill, you'll know that they're supportive right away with that. Um, and otherwise, we hope we can provide some resources to keep you updated. Um, if this question is in uh, kind of targeted as like, will you know if your legislator is supportive or not ahead of going into the lobby day, I believe that's information we will try to provide. So thank you. And if you really are curious about some, some legislator you want to talk to, please do reach out to us. You can email us and we'll tell you. Um, what we can tell you about what we know. So if you have a particular legislator you're going to have like a meeting with, or if you just are going to, I don't know, be at an event with them and you want tips for how to talk to them, you can reach out to us. Where can people find more details about the bill, especially considering the court ruling described earlier? Is there a link to look at the bill in its current form? Thank you so much. There is not yet the bill is being filed next week, the first week of December. Then you'll be able to find it by going to ledge.wa.gov and you'll be able to find everything you want to know about that. I am confident we at Fairvote Washington will send it an email to everyone letting you know the bill number and getting us all ready to advocate for it. Um, but the bill does not exist yet in public. Yeah. Yes, that's true. And um, one day you will be able to read about our bill on our website, but the person who runs our website, our updates our website is me and I need to get to that. So uh, as soon as possible, we'll have some details about our bill and you know the specifics around talking about that court decision because that's a really interesting part of it. Yeah. We have one question. Uh, there are a couple of marching bands in Olympia. Would it be fun slash helpful to have them at the rally? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. That sounds like the most fun I could possibly have on the steps of the Capitol. <laughs> Thank you to whomever might be All able right. to us organize that. I have, I, have a, I have an idea. And if I'm correct, thank you. <laughs> but I think that sounds like a lot of fun. I will double check my, I will dot my I's and cross my T's that that type of thing is permissible on the campus. But um, it sounds like fun to me. So yes, until further notice. All right. 
Sounds great. We have a question from somebody in Gig Harbor who's wondering if uh, Fairville, Washington, if, if there's anybody else in Gig Harbor from Fairville, Washington, somebody who's looking to, to connect with people in their community that maybe they can help carpool or, you know, connect with before Lobby Day. Absolutely. I love this question. Um, there are, I would have to look if we have people specifically from Gig Harbor, but I can tell you we have supporters in all 49 legislative districts in Washington state. So there's a high chance that the answer is yes. And we are absolutely planning on helping facilitate carpools um, from the different legislative districts and different regions. So the answer is yes, yes, and yes. Um, we would love to connect you to whomever else signs up. And this person in particular, if you would like to call the other members of other Fairboat Washington supporters who live in Gig Harbor, we'd be happy to give you a list and a script and <laughs> have you <laughs> bring them along. So I can definitely say there are a few people in Gig Harbor that I can think of uh, right off off the top of my head so okay excellent <laughs> yeah, thank you this person will be well taken care of and then the final question i've got listed here is will you provide lodging guidance where can people stay if they have to uh come from across the state maybe yeah great question um we are not yet planning on building a like a hotel block and um, we don't yet know how many people are coming we are working with local volunteers on finding some housing for um low cost and we would love to reach out and make sure we can provide those to those who need it. Um, we will definitely let you know the address of the church that we're going to be using as our kind of home base so you'll be able to know where to look in the region and the area to find some lodging. Sounds great and as you can as attendees can tell it is the end of November and this is in January so even though it is a month and a half away we're preparing for it now because we really want to make this a big push, a big show of power. And Carrie's been doing a fantastic job getting all of us organized, getting all of our calendars scheduled out so that we uh, can get as many folks there as possible. We're really trying to show you know, that this isn't just some abstract idea, that there really are people all across the state that care about ranked choice voting, that see this as a priority, that see this as a key to making all the important other things that matter to our daily lives happen. Um, Carrie, is there anything else you'd like to add for folks tonight? I want to add on to something you just said, because yes, we want to show our power, but we also kind of want to do this for you all. You all are have been with us since 2017, maybe more recently, but we've been here, we've been doing the work, and this isn't a moment to spotlight you and the amazing work that you've been doing day after day, year after year. And this is also a bit of celebration for all that Fair Vote has grown into. So thank you for being with us every step of the way. Um, I think I wanna close it by saying that this is not the last opportunity to learn more about Lobby Day and what, your, um, what the day is gonna look like and how to do these meetings. We understand that it can feel intimidating. Um, to go speak to these people. And as much as we can assure you that it's not and that you don't need to be, knowledge is power and being prepared is power. So on Tuesday, December 12th, we are hosting a training to learn a little bit more about how um, to structure a meeting, what the different roles of the meeting can be um, for anybody who hopes to share their story with their legislator of why ranked choice voting is so important to them. We'll help guide you in um, shaping that narrative so that you can be authentic to your story and share our talking points as well so that the legislators are getting a consistent message across the board. Um, and even after that, <laughs> after December 12th, we have three opportunities with our amazing organizer, Stephanie Jung, to ask her anything. We have three AMAs, and that is a chance to ask each other questions. Um, we're hoping it's a more intimate space where Lobby day goers can get to know each other, ask Stephanie questions, um, and really feel connected to each other and this day. So that is what I would like to tell you all. Um, and I think there are some links in the chat. Thank you so much, Ben. And thank you to all of you. Um, I am just delighted to be part of this movement. I got to use ranked choice voting when I lived in Minneapolis um, years ago, and it has really stuck with me as 
an important tool for better governance. And I don't need to tell you that, you all know that, <laughs> but just really appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, everybody. And check out those links in the chat and be, keep an eye on your email for um, more things coming up. All right. Take care.